That's the sound of the police. That's the sound. So I'm currently um, a detective sergeant for Child Protection Bay of Plenty. Um, and I do that and uh, obviously host Police 10 7, so I split the roles. It's at this point, I admit that I'm not really sure of what I'm supposed to say. The role with Police 10 7 uh, has given me an opportunity to uh, work with police uh, all over New Zealand and to uh, help solve crime from the top to the bottom of the island. So uh, it's, just, uh, it's just an awesome opportunity and I'm really glad that I've uh, managed to secure that role. Once uh, the applications went through, we were shortlisted for auditions and I had to come up and do a, a crime walkthrough, so a walk, walkthrough of a uh, fake crime scene. Real investigation is finding the evidence that can't physically talk, but that talks to you. For example, if we look at the two boxes of drink on the bench, we know that this person is a big drinker because one's not enough. Uh, I haven't really asked the producer why I got the job ahead of several others, but um, I think it's definitely got something to do with the fact that I'm an awesome cop. Uh... <laughs> <laughs> we'll line up more of New Zealand's wanted faces. I think one of the biggest things that I've sort of been able to do since joining the New Zealand Police is to be sort of uh, in a position where I can break down some of the misunderstandings. I know that at Police College, one of the first things I did uh, was call my family and say, hey, bro, we can't do that anymore. <laughs> it's illegal. If we follow through the rest of the house, other clues suddenly jump out at us. That's definitely pointing to some sort of deviancy. Welcome, welcome to the jungle where things will never I'm very proud of the fact that I grew up in South Auckland and I think one of the first things to come out when I secured a role with 10-7 was that I'm from Manarewa in South Auckland and I'm currently living in the Bay of Plenty. Growing up in Manarewa with a uh, pretty close family, um, we, didn't really, we didn't really venture too far outside of our own uh, family circle. Uh, we had a pretty cool neighbourhood. We were always out playing uh, games down the end of the street, whether it was long ball, uh, or we'd uh, trick one of the guys in the street who had one of the only bicycles to ride around the uh, circle at the end of the cul-de-sac, and we'd throw tennis balls, and if you got his front tyre, you got to ride his bike for five minutes. So my father's Tongan and my mother's European, and obviously I was born in Auckland, but uh, I'm very, very proud of my Tongan heritage uh, and the extended family that we have here and back at uh, Tonga. From a young age, I wanted to be a police officer. I don't think I really understood what the role was about. I just wanted to drive a nice new car and, uh, and shoot guns, catch baddies. Growing up, I didn't really know any policemen, and to be fair, uh, my dad had always told us if we came home in a police car, He'd hang us upside down, which was kind of his Tongan English way of saying we'd be in big trouble. I lost my father in 2007 to cancer. He was the backbone of our family. He was certainly the rock for all of us. I didn't realise it until I'd actually been in the police for a year, uh, how much he and my mother had done for us growing up. Um, and I actually went back uh, after about a year of working in South Auckland and thanked him for keeping me out of trouble. And when I uh, became sort of more mature as a person, I realised that he was really my mentor. The person that I, I wanted to be like when I grew up. No. <laughs> right. Sorry, bro, sorry. Yeah. <laughs> okay.